So what I'm going to do in this video is show you the pattern that I use that combines using community modules from the Terraform registry with uh, our own needs, our own logical grouping of stuff. Because what I would really like to do is keep in line with our EC2 module here that both creates an AWS instance and handles the logic for creating an Elastic IP address if we need and want it. So I'm in my EC2 module here with the uh, main.tf file. And the use case here, the example I'm using here is kind of simple. I actually like the VPC use case. We'll see in a little bit, a little better. But just to show you what I can do here is we are in a module ourselves that we made here, right? The EC2 module. Modules themselves can pull in other modules. So the pattern that I want to show you here is actually the fact that you can add modules um, into modules that already exist, We're kind of using submodules, although this isn't Git, so don't be confused by that term. OK, so first things first, I'm just going to show you what that looks like. I have our resource here, AWS instance, that we made before. It pulls in the AMI, the instance type. It defines a root block device, a subnet ID we get from our random shuffle resource, BBC security groups to add the server to whatever security groups we give it. We have a lifecycle and some tags here. Now I'm going to go ahead and paste in what this looks like if we use the community module. And the community module is the Terraform AWS module, the one we saw before, EC2 instance, that version 2.17, that was the latest. And then I'm going to fill out the stuff that this needs that is effectively uh, equivalent, right? I'm going to give it a name. Now, a lot of these community modules have a name variable that they want, right? Now, remember, we're in a module section here, so we're passing in variables to this module. Um, the name is effectively going to be the tag that is called name, and we can, might actually end up overwriting that later down here. So don't worry about that. You can give this name whatever you want. Uh, we give it the AMI, just like before, the instance type, VPC security groups, the subnet ID, again, it's the random shuffle. Uh, security groups is virus security group. Root block device is a little bit different. If we check out the documentation over here for root block device, we'll see uh, we can customize details about the root block device of the instance, blah, blah, blah. And we have a list here, and the list contains various maps of strings. So that's a little bit different here because instead of root block device just being one object, like we saw before, when we are using the, um, that's actually down here, I'll show you. Right here, it's just a block, and you can actually define this multiple times, I believe. The module here wants a list, right, an array type thing of a map of strings, and each one we pass it is just going to be one of these um, items, these maps. We have volume size and volume type and a bunch of other stuff. Um, now, if we head on over to the repository, see the source code there? and go to main, and we find root block device. We already see a new thing called a dynamic block within this uh, AWS instance resource that it's creating for us. And in here, we have a for each. So it's actually going to grab each root block device that we define. And then for each, it's going to fill out root block device uh, a tag for that with the following content. And this is all the options that we can pass, although the only ones we decided to use is uh, volume size and volume type. So. What that looks like here is in our module EC2 instance, we pass it a list, an array of root block device items. We're doing the same thing here, tags. We're going to merge up our default tags with var.tags. And tags also happens to be a variable that we can pass into the EC2 instance module. So that stays the same. And I think the only thing we didn't do here is lifecycle. Let's go ahead and see what this wants for lifecycle. Looks like it doesn't even have an option for lifecycle in this case. That's Interesting. So we can just go ahead and leave that out for now. Right. So there's no uh, lifecycle option in that case. So we just have to decide what we want to do with that. We could create and use our own module if this lifecycle hook becomes very important to us, or we could just leave it alone for now. And in my case, just to move the video forward, we'll just pretend we don't care about this too much. But again, that is one of the trade offs with community modules. You lose a little bit of control. OK. So an interesting thing here is that we don't need to change our module definition here for any of these options, because all the things we're already passing into our custom EC2 module, the environment, the role, the instance size, the AMIs, the subnets, the security groups, the tags, if we want to create an EIP and all that, are things we are going to pass directly into this community module, right? There's not many other options that we need to define. We don't even need to really define them differently, which is kind of nice. We actually keep that the same. And then we can logically group our other stuff that we want in here. Let's go ahead and delete this resource because we don't need it anymore because we're using the community module. And then we can logically group in, in our custom module here, the EIP, and it will create it conditionally if we want it to and associate it. Now, we no longer have in our EIP association the AWS instance resource that we created here. Instead, we need to define this 
instance ID using the module syntax. So module dot, and we call this EC2 instance, that was the name of the module. And in here, we can see how to get the ID of the instance. So this kind of looks nice, right? Um, the ID is the instance ID returned to us, and we know that because the documentation tells us that. If we go to outputs, we'll find ID. And this is actually a list of IDs because this module uses count, so it's going to conditionally create one or more AWS instances. And that means uh, we're going to get a list back of IDs here, not just a single AWS instance ID. That means we have to use a notation like this to get the first instance that we're going to get returned. Because in our case, we know we're only creating one single EC2 instance. OK, so that had to change there. And let's see, variables are going to stay the same because we're going to pass in the same variables. Uh, we don't need any additional variables to change how we are giving them to that community module, so we can keep that. And then our outputs change a little bit, right? Because our app instance, once again, is a little bit different. So this is going to look exactly like how we saw before using the module syntax, right? So module and the module we need EC2 instance, the ID and the first ID, because we know we're only creating one instance within this module for our use case. Now, we made some changes here, right? We created or changed our EC2 module, our custom one, and in it, we reference a separate module, this community module, EC2 instance. Um, and because of that, we need to run Terraform in it once again. We need to get into the Terraform course directory, and we can do Terraform in it. And we can see that it's finding and downloading our AWS module from the registry. And it successfully has initialized, so we can do Terraform plan. And I've destroyed the infrastructure in between videos, as I usually do to save money. So we're going to see 34 objects or something like that still. Yeah, 34, which is actually the same as before. And we'll see one of those objects appears to be our AWS instance. And it's all basically the same as before. We're going to get the same tags, the same uh, root block device settings for the root disk drive, right? 20 gigabytes is what we set in our case, GP3, and all that good stuff. So we are using a community module that's going to be better maintained than our stuff. And we didn't really change anything. We got exactly what we wanted to before using this pattern of still creating your own module, but allowing that module to pull in other community modules. Now, of course, you don't want to go too deep with this pattern. You don't want to have modules that pull in other modules that pull in other modules and get this weird module inception, because tracking down where issues are coming from when you run into errors gets really hairy there. So you want to use this with caution. But it is a very nice pattern to group together logical stuff. For example, uh, I wanted this Elastic IP address to really be in the same module, the same logical area as where we create the AWS instance while still being able to leverage a community module from the registry. OK, in the next video, let's just update our VPC module to do the same thing. And this is actually going to show you how a community module actually helps us out a little bit because it's kind of a nicer, cleaner way to create a VPC using the community one.